Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Burn, Nick, and once again, I'm flying solo. Um, PCA starts, um, like, today or tomorrow? I think tomorrow. Um, this episode comes out on Friday, the uh, 22nd, and, uh, right, today's, the, yeah, t- t- tomorrow, uh, the 22nd. And so, um, everybody's traveling. Everybody's traveling. All my local potential co-hosts are busy, um, and so it's one of those things where everybody's busy right now, and so you get me by myself, but that's okay. I'm going to make do. So today what we're going to do is I have combed over the multitude of press releases that have come my way regarding uh, things that are being announced at the PCA trade show Um, I have, uh, gone over all of them and I have narrowed down, you know, kind of what I'm interested in. Obviously there's a ton of news out there and, you know, um, I, I could probably fill the whole show going through all the different press releases and everything I've received, but, um, I kind of figure let's, let's drill it down. Let's, let's, let's really condense it down a little bit. And go from there. So I'm going to go over that here. But first, what am I smoking? And that's the other thing I'm going to be doing today. So I am part of the uh, Cigar Authority's Stars Review Team. um, Or the Boners, as Mr. Jonathan likes to call us. And um, I have to do cigar number nine for them. I got my lovely little email from Dan Davidson uh, today telling, reminding me, saying, hey, you haven't done your review yet. Get it to us. And so um, I need to do that. So today I'm going to be smoking the first of two of the samples that I received. The first uh, of cigar number 9C. 9C. So, for those of you in the YouTube, you're seeing cigar number 9C. It is a cigar. It is round. It is uh, approximately, you know, originally I was thinking 6 by 50 But I won't lie, I'm kind of, based off of, uh, you know, mouthfeel a little bit, I'm kind of guessing this might be smi- slightly smaller than a 50 Maybe like a 6 by 48 Maybe it is a 6x50, and it's been a while since I've had a 6x50. I don't know. But I'm going to say that it's 6x50, but realistically, I'm actually leaning towards maybe a 6x48. Um, it has a nice uh, kind of sun-grown-ish brown wrapper to it, Habano perhaps. Um you know, you don't... That's the whole thing with this with this review thing. So for those of you unfamiliar with this is <laughs> I pay for the privilege of being part of this review team where they send me two of the same cigar. It's unbanded, and I have to basically smoke the two of them and give my reviews. And, and, and it's mostly flavor notes that they're looking for, but in general, the review of the cigar. So over the course of this episode, I'm going to be smoking this cigar, and I'll be concentrating on flavor notes and whatnot from the first third, the second third, and the third, final third, 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 final third. Um, I'll be looking at the construction of the cigar, kind of how well it's burning, you know, um, things of that nature. And from there, you know, we'll kind of just uh, um, figure out the strength of the cigar. Is it a strong cigar, a weak cigar, you know, kind of assign a number there. And by the end of it, hopefully I have a nice, uh, nice, nice numerical value that I can assign to the cigar. Now I do have two of these. This is the first one of the two that I am smoking. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where I'll do this and then I'll do the second one at a later time and then kind of, uh, compile all of my thoughts in one place and get the, uh, review sent to Dave with a final score. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing cut and lit. And uh, so it's time to cut the cigar, and the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company. Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri, 
Uh, guys, um, it's getting wonderful here in St. Louis. He has a lounge, but he also has that giant 1,500-square-foot covered patio. Thursday nights are the night to hang out. Uh, not that it's not a good time to hang out at Riverman anytime, but Thursday nights, that's when Joe Mama and his crew is out there. So if you want to get the full lounge experience at Riverman, you know, Thursday nights, man, there's a good group of guys hanging out up there. Uh, when it's nice outside, they bring their lawn chairs and sit out under the patio. When it's not, they sit in the back and enjoy the nice uh, the nice TVs and everything in the back there. But you know what? It's always a party at Riverman Cigar Company. He's got all kinds of great cigars in the humidors for you to enjoy. So there's never a shortage of, of uh, fine cigars and sticks. And, um, you know, while you're there, you can meet a friend. You can make a friend. Um, if you're not in the St. Louis area, but you want to support a brick and mortar, Dan does do mail order. So you can just give him a call over there at the shop. He will be happy to walk around and kind of give you the virtual tour over the phone of what he's got in the inventory so that you can compile a nice care package for yourself and have that shipped out to you right away. Anyway, it's Riverman Cigar Company, Crestwood, Missouri. And with that, it's time to go ahead and cut the cigar. So I'm hearing like what sounds like a truck. Or something outside. Uh, I don't know what's going on. There's all sorts of drama in the neighborhood right now. My neighbor um, is moving. She, uh, the, the person in the other half of the duplex that I rent, she has secured herself a spot in a nice assisted living home. And, uh, you know, she's moving. And so I will have the building to myself. And then, you know, there's just all sorts of different things going on. My other neighbor over here on this side, stuff's going on. Things are happening here on my street. So I never know when I hear a truck like that what it is. Cold draw time on the Cigar 9C here. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm almost getting... This is going to be a real triggering episode for those of you who don't like hearing the mouth stuff because there's a lot that goes into this this review process. Um, but I'm getting like almost like a real smooth like, and I, I you're don't think I'm crazy. Don't think I'm crazy. I'm getting a real smooth like toothpaste kind of taste, but without the heavy mint. Toothpaste tends to be very minty. This has a very kind of smooth tooth, toothpaste taste to it, but without the heavy mint. Um, so I would say kind of creamy and um, that, but, but yeah, maybe, 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 but I'm not getting the mint component to the toothpaste. So I'd say, I, I would say kind of a creamy, um, maybe caramel-ish? Caramel. Creamy caramel to the cold draw on Cigar 9C. Um, so all right, I'm going to fire this guy up now. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking this is smaller than a 50. This is definitely... Like a 48. But that's okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get my burn really, really good here. Because, you know, since I'm reviewing it, I want to make sure that I do it properly. Um, I have one spot that just doesn't quite go away. Where will that go? I've talked about this on the show before. How it's really important to me to make sure I get a... Uh, uh, I, I really take this, this uh, you know, review seriously because... Um, this is somebody's product and I'm putting together essentially a review of it where I talk about, 
you know, what this is and and what my thoughts are. And it's going to be in a written record that's going to be out there and available and, and used to influence other people to potentially purchase this this product. And that's important to me because I, you know, as a small business owner, you know, I know that um, you work hard on, on your product. And, you know, if somebody comes along and shits on it, then it hurts you and you take it personally. And so I don't want to like give a half-assed effort to this, this review process because this is, this is somebody's livelihood and I want to make sure that, that it's given its proper due credit. So anyway, so I might be a little overthinking with it, but that's, that's where it is. So anyway, the, uh, the draw on it is nice. Smoke production is nice when you are puffing on it and exhaling. It's not like it's kicking off like a ton of extra smoke as it's just like, you know, kind of here. It's just kind of kind of wisping. So anyway, let's start going over some press releases about stuff that's coming out at PCA. Um, I'm going to start with Aladino. And guys, you I've had Trey Mac on a couple of different times here lately. He's gone over all the stuff coming out at PCA from Aladino. Um, so, you know, if you're really interested in the finer point details, go back and check out some of uh, my more recent Trey Mac, specifically the Trey Mac episode um, with, uh, with, the, with the spotted dick. I think that's the one where he really dives into it. But... Uh, just to touch on it, so you have the, the Aladino Maduro coming out in the Gordo size in the round. So it's not going to be box pressed. It's going to be in the round, and it's going to be Gordo size. So you got that coming. You have the Fuminoche. Fuminoche Cigar at Night. It's going to be their new cigar from them. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying that because, uh, as Trey Mac puts it, it's it's uh, going to be you know your nightcap cigar. Your, your smooth but kind of heavy, you know, cigar. So I'm looking forward to trying that. But then the other uh, cigar that they are coming out with at PCA from the fine folks at Aladino, uh, they put out a press release about the Aladino Cameroon Reserva. It is uh, the first cigar crafted 100% from Honduran Cameroon. It was blended by Julio and Justo Aroa uh, and... It epitomizes exclusivity with its limited production available solely through allocation. Um, do, 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 do. It's going to come in a 12 count box, and the color scheme of said box and the um, uh, bands and whatnot on the cigar are reminiscent of the Cameroon flag. And <coughs> you have. Um, it's a box of 12. It's only going to be available in a 6x52 Toro. Um, wrapper, binder, filler are all Honduran Cameroon. And the MSRP on it is $22, which is kind of sort of in line with the uh, Corojo Reserva, um, if I recall correctly. You know, so so it's not like it's like excessive, you know. And I'll be honest, uh, a $22 um fully Cameroon cigar from Aladino, I would 100% pay that to try that because I think that sounds amazing. Um, Yeah. So there's lots coming from Aladino. Like I said, go back and check out one of the episodes with Trey Mac here recently. He gets really into the details of it. Next, though, we have some news about the Fuente Padron collaboration. So... Uh, the Fuente Padron uh, Legends collaboration. This uh, <laughs> this looks like it could be one of the most expensive boxes of cigars ever. So the MSRP on this box, which by the way, uh, it is shipping. Um, it is it is actually shipping. Uh, it was first shown off at the 2022 trade show. It was announced in 2021. Shown off at the 2022 trade show, and uh, it is a project created by Carlos Carlito Fuente and George Padron to honor their respective fathers. Um, so you have a nice uh, collaboration between the two. 
But uh, the box is going to contain 40 cigars, 20 made by Fuente, 20 made by Padron. Cigars are six, uh, 7 by 50 Churchills. The cigar made by Fuente is round, and the cigar made by Padron is box-pressed. Um, no blend details have been disclosed. But the box itself, the 40-count box, you're looking at a price tag of $7,115, bringing the per cigar price down to a cheap $172 per stick. So um, for those of you who were thinking about just dabbling and, and trying the Fuente Padron uh, collaboration, um, it's not going to be a cheap date in any way, shape, or form. Realistically, you know, I don't, I don't know how these are even going to be allocated. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's going to be rough, man. It's going to be really, really rough to try and get your hands on this. So, um, I would say that uh, if you're looking for it, be prepared to shell out some cash. And I would also say that you know, depending upon the retailer. Not saying this is right, but depending upon the retailer, be prepared to pay more than $178 per stick, given the rarity and scarcity of this cigar. I could easily see this being one where a retailer kind of puts it out there and says, you know what, I can get more for that because it's rare. And that's bullshit, but I could see him doing it. So anyway, just saying, if you're interested, that's going to be rough. But as for a Padron that might be more accessible to you, um, this year marks the 60th anniversary of Padron and making its debut at the 2024 PCA trade show will be a new limited production line of cigars that celebrates that uh, 60th anniversary. Um, it's uh, got two new blends, one natural, one Maduro. Both are Nicaraguan Puros and created just for this release. Um the cigars are going to be a Perfecto Vitola that measures 6 by 48 at its most slender and 56 at its thickest. Um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. And it's going to be in a 10-count box. Price is not currently known. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're going to be getting a uh, Padron 60th anniversary uh, debuting at PCA. Uh, out in Vegas. I'm talking too much. I need to keep this thing going. Because I do not want to re relight the uh, review cigar here. Um, that would be rough. So. <coughs> anyway. Um. All right, we got this going back going again. Have a, just touch it up slightly, just get a little bit more heat going. Do have one spot on the wrapper here that appears to have cracked and is wanting to pop open, and so I'm just kind of trying to tamp that down with a little bit of pressure and saliva. Just to uh, just to hopefully get past it. If you look on the YouTube there, you can kind of see it's real, relatively close to my burn line. So I'm hoping that I can uh, kind of keep it, keep it under control until I get to it and burn past it. And then it won't be an issue. Um, I don't really particularly want to use that as something against. I'm going to I'm going to carterize that here real quick. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to like count that against the cigar because um, <coughs> realistically, that could have happened in the mail. Um, it could have happened for a variety of different reasons. I mean, I live in the Midwest, and it's. Uh, March, you know, I mean, humidity is up and down, left and right, sideways. I mean, it's it's gross. Temperatures are all over the flipping place. So realistically, this time of year, 
uh, it could be a variety of different things that caused that wrapper to crack. And so I don't want to uh, attribute any blame to the actual cigar. Now, if the other one is all beat to shit, too, then I'll definitely attribute it to the post office. But um, but I don't think it is. Um, I will say Dave, uh, Dave and the crew over there at uh, Two Guys, they pack the cigars really, really well. So um, I don't know. I'm going to probably assume that any cracks like that or splits like that are taking place due to uh, uh, changes and fluctuations in humidity and temperature from living here in the Middle West. Oh. Um, anyway, um, the actual smoking experience of it, it's been... Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm so bad about trying to pick out like under normal circumstance I can tell you oh it's blah 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 but like I just I overthink it with these star reviews I think um, and that and I bit the hell out of my tongue at some point and I've got this spot on the side of my tongue on this side that I just keep hitting against my teeth and that's making life unpleasant but um let's uh. Nice, easy retro hail. Um, what what was that? I, I, yeah, I know this is super riveting, but I'm giving you an insight into how this goes. You sit here for an hour plus smoking a cigar, and you gotta really con when you're doing these reviews like this. You have to really concentrate on it because. Um, you can't, you, you don't want to be distracted and like do, watching TV or doing something else, <laughs> recording a podcast, be, because, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of effort to pull together in the mind, you know, kind of what you're, what you're coming up with. It's not easy. <coughs> um... Oh, I retrohaled too slow. Um, I'm going to say, boy, I don't want to say pepper because I got a little bit of tingle in the nostril on that one, but I think it's because I just went too slowly. The first time I did a retrohale, I didn't get that pepper sensation whatsoever. It's kind of a baking spice kind of thing going on, um, but it's it's light. It's pleasant. It's It's good. It's... It kind of continues with, I was saying that on the cold draw, it kind of had that creamy caramel, you know, uh, creamy toothpaste without the, the mint kind of thing going on. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's just kind of soft and mellow. Um, and I'm digging it. I, I don't know what it is, though. Now, in a perfect world, and I will say, with cigar number two, I will have my tasting wheel, or my flavor wheel, uh, with me. And I should have had that with me for this, but quite frankly, it's just one more thing to have out here as I'm doing this. But the flavor wheel, it, you know, for those of you who haven't seen one of those, just Google cigar flavor wheel, and you'll see a bunch of examples. But it's a wheel, and it kind of gives you different different areas, different main flavor components that you find in cigars. And then under those main ones, it breaks it down into e even smaller individual ones. And it's super helpful with helping you figure out what you're getting on a cigar. Because what will happen is you'll get a, a flavor component in your mouth. And if you're looking at that flavor wheel... Your brain is processing both the flavor and it's reading what's on the page. And at some point, two of those are going to intersect. You're going to find a flavor component on the page that matches, at least in your mind, similar aspects to what you're getting off of the cigar. And, you know, nothing's ever exact. You know, you're not going to necessarily be like, oh, my God, that's pecan pie. I mean, maybe. but um, But you can... You can uh, get a general idea like, oh, it's got a nuttiness to it. And then if you're really good, you can break it down and be like, it's less of a cashew and more of an almond. But whatever. I don't know. Uh, I, I tend to go in generalities 
you know, the big spokes, not the little spokes. Um, but anyway, let's get back to the press releases. So we covered our friends at Aladino. <coughs> we covered the Fuente Padron collaboration, and we even touched on the Padron 60th anniversary cigar that's uh, debuting out in Vegas this week. Um, but also coming soon from the fine folks at J.C. Newman is a cigar uh, f- there in honor of a uh, minor league baseball team. Uh, according to the press release, three and a half decades, there's a minor league baseball team in Tampa known as the Tampa Smokers, a nod to the city's cigar heritage. And 70 years after the Tampa Smokers played their final game, J.C. Newman is honoring the Tampa made uh, or the Tampa cigars or smokers with a cigar in their honor. Um, it debuted last uh, or the other evening at a uh, event at El Rey Low in uh, Ybor City, and it uses an Ecuadorian wrapper over undisclosed binder and filler. The Tampa Smokers is in one size. It's a 6x54 Toro Extra Vitola that is made to look like a baseball bat. It's got an MSRP of $20 per cigar and will come in boxes of 20 uh, Newman says the cigars should be in stores in time for the World Series this fall. And so you're looking sometime October-ish. Um, they're going to show them off at the PCA Trade Show. And, uh, you know, they also have a prototype humidor made from baseball bats, uh, which they've been kind of doing some really cool humidors over there at J.C. Newman here lately. So, um, (laughs) the Tampa Smokers baseball team played from 1919 to 1954 in a variety of independent leagues. Five baseball Hall of Famers played for the Smokers, most notably Al Lopez, who played for the hometown Smokers from 1925 to 1926. Um, doo 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 And J.C. Newman has a history with baseball. They once sponsored the Cleveland Indians. And when in the 1990s, when Tampa Bay was given an expansion franchise, the Newmans um, partnered with the new franchise for a Cuesta Ray cigar bar at Tropicana Field. Um... You know, uh, that was removed ahead of the 2018 season. Um, They also once sponsored a Cuesta Ray cigar giveaway during the seventh inning stretch. Um, And there you go from there. So, I don't know. Um, Very cool. I like that Newman, J.C. Newman has been uh, really leaning into the um, cigar heritage um, of Ybor City in Tampa lately. You know, they've had a lot of uh, a lot of cool little projects, you know, that they've got going on there um, as it relates to, you know, their, their home city. And I think that's really neat and uh, fun. So good on them. Looking forward to that. Then we have coming from United Cigars, um, we have the United Connecticut, and it is a uh, looks like an addition to their core line. It's going to be made with an Ecuadorian Connecticut seed shade grown wrapper covering a Dominican binder and fillers from the Dominican Republic, including Dominican broadleaf. Uh, United says the wrappers are used for the new, the wrappers used for the new line are taken from the higher primings of the tobacco plant, meaning the leaves come from higher up on the plant. Um, and it's being made in the Dominican Republic. It's going to come in three vitolas, a twenty count boxes, a five by fifty four robusto at seven dollars per cigar. You're going to have a six by fifty four Toro at eight dollars per cigar, and a seven by fifty four Churchill at nine dollars a cigar. Um, you know, they, they've had, um, a natural and a Maduro for quite a while. So this is going to be their expansion into the Connecticut's for their core line. So very awesome to, uh, see United Cigars expand upon their core line a little bit. 
And then we have another press release here. Sorry, I'm keeping that cigar going here. I'm almost to that little split. I'm almost to that little spot so that hopefully I can burn past that and uh, have clear sailing for the rest of the way. So far, first third has smoked really well. Um, the draw on it is slightly tighter than perhaps I would prefer, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, the uh, smoke output on it has been nice. Um, I've been kind of concentrating on trying to get past that that little wrapper tear, and so that's that's also on me a little bit. I, I you know it's been my focus, but all in all, I've been I've been digging cigar number nine C. Um, you know it's it's not been bad. Anyway, um, more news from PCA here. We have West Tampa Tobacco. Our friend Rick Rodriguez over there at West Tampa Tobacco. He has announced uh, that you will have a new cigar line uh, or new cigar at PCA called the Circle of Life. Um, the cigar is reportedly made at Casa Carrillo in the Dominican Republic. The blend is not being disclosed. It's going to be offered in three sizes. It's going to be a 5x52 Robusto at $12.99 a cigar, a 6x54 Toro at $13.99 a cigar, and a 6x60 Gigante at $14.99 per cigar. They are expected to ship in May. So um, this comes from Cigar Aficionado. Um, and so we're kind of just... Waiting to see what happened there, but uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, good times. I mean, I know that uh, Rick and the team over there at West Tampa Tobacco, they've been teasing something on uh, on their social media here lately, um, and so it'll be kind of fun to see what happens there, but uh, let's be real. You guys love the West Tampa Tobacco cigars, so realistically... If uh, the Circle of Life is the next thing from Rick and the team over there at West Tampa Tobacco, I'm sure you guys are going to smoke it and love this one too. Um, so we got that to look forward to. And so finally, in terms of news of cigars coming to us from the PCA Trade Show, and there's tons more again. I just distilled it down into what caught my eye. What am I interested in smoking? You know, don't get me wrong. There's probably other things out there that have been announced that I would be interested in smoking. This is just based off press releases that I've received. What am I interested in? And, of course, I'm ending it with our friends over there at Villiger. They're adding two new sizes to the 1888 Nicaragua line. Um, at the PCA trade show, they are going to announce, uh, they're going to show off the new 1888 Nicaragua Churchill and Gordo to retailers. Um, Blendwise uses a Nicaragua binder and filler from Nicaragua and Pennsylvania. Uh, it's produced at Villager de Nicaragua, the new, uh, factory in Nicaragua, and, which is run in partnership with, uh, Hoya de, uh, Nicaragua. And the Churchill is going to be a 7 by 47 with an MSRP of $9.60. Comes in a box of 20 Then we have the Gordo, uh, which is a 6 by 60 MSRP of $10 in a box of 20 um, They introduced the 1888 Nicaragua last year. You guys know I have been super high on this cigar ever since they you know, sent me the initial uh, uh, review sample of it. I mean, it is lights out one like it, it i mean in terms of a core line cigar from villiger i it's my favorite i mean you have that you have the la libertad and then from there you go into the taa exclusives and the miami and all the rest of that and everything but in terms of like an everyday smoker um the 1888 nicaragua is probably my favorite thing that they put out as an everyday cigar um for that so the two new sizes are going to be the longest and the thickest of the sizes in the line and they are expected to ship to retailers in may so that'll be good we uh we're looking forward to that and i will say too um that i was planning well let's put it that i wasn't planning i mean i i was planning 
I applied to go to PCA um, as media, and I was approved. Um, the unfortunate fact of the matter is, is that with March Madness starting up, uh, well, this being Friday today, um, everything in Vegas was just exponentially more expensive. And budget-wise... Budget wise, it just didn't work out, and so I could not do it. And that's fine. You know what? It's fine. Uh, I've got other stuff going on. Realistically, I don't need to go out to Vegas twice in three months. Um, but uh, I kept getting people reaching out because I guess I was on the media list as be as somebody who was going to be there. And I was having people reach out saying, like, when can we schedule an interview, blah, 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 and all that. I would reach back out to them and tell them, hey, um, unfortunately, I will not be there. However, uh, we can schedule something for after the trade show so you guys can talk about, you know, what's coming up and everything. So I would say that hopefully starting in, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be generous and say early April. I don't want to say late March. Let's say early April. Hopefully in early April, we will have uh, a number of different companies coming on and talking to you guys about everything that they've got coming up and uh, the different offerings that they uh, have announced at PCA. So um, we've got that to look forward to. In the meantime, I am still taking my time with cigar number 9C. This is a slow smoke. Whatever this is. This is a slow smoke. Um, I am trying. There we go. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I almost just lit myself on fire. Um, I'm trying to get past the split. I'm very nearly past it. I just have a little bit more to go. But um, it is a slow smoker. Um, you got to take your time with it. I'm digging it. I'm probably getting eh, relatively-ish close to the start of the second third. Um, but I, I'd say I'm still in the first third. So far, it's been um, it's been really good. It ha I won't say it has had a lot of like flavor changes. It's been pretty pretty standard for what it is. Um, it hasn't been bad. It just hasn't been like, you know... I, the first third is very very straight through it's not anything that's like blowing me away but it's also not anything bad so let's now go ahead and do the you know what before we do the villager entertainment report let's hear this week's pinky's fun fact hey it's your girl pinky ready for a fun fact if someone offers you a grilled cheese sandwich using kazu marzu cheese you might want to think twice because that cheese is made from maggots and sheep milk. This has been Pinky, yeah. and I'll be back next time with more fun facts. I don't need maggot cheese. I don't. I don't need maggot cheese. Um, okay, so it's Kazu Marzu. I think she said. Um, yeah, we'll we'll skip the maggot cheese, and uh, I'll stick with uh, stick with my good old American and uh, or cheddar or Swiss. I do like cheese. I like cheese a lot. Took a charcuterie board making class one time. Did it as a way to uh, to meet women. Um, the unfortunate thing was is there were women in it. There were a lot of women in it. There were probably about 20 or 25 women in it. Uh, all old enough to be my grandmother. Um, <laughs> so it's one of those things. It, uh, it worked out. I met women, but they were all very proud of me and my you know ability to make a, make a flower out of meat. But uh, it was not the the uh, matchmaking opportunity that perhaps I uh, envisioned. But I got creative. I wanted to get off the apps. I got creative. And uh, I learned how to make a flower out of salami. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and do this now. It's time for the Villager Cigars Entertainment Report. Brought to you by Villiger. Villiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. 
we guarantee that Villager Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. All right. I'm definitely getting, I think, at the point of transition between the first third and the second third. The uh, <coughs> strength level of the cigar, just ever so slightly in the last little bit, has picked up just a hair. Just a, just a little hair. And... Um, it's it's smoking well, and I'm I'm still digging it. I would say at uh, hmm is a slight, ever 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 so slight presence of like a pepper or something on the retro hail. It's very it's beat back it's still much more baker spice but i feel like perhaps maybe the cigar over the course of it is going to transition from baker spice to peppery i don't know i'm 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 just speculating but it, it does seem like um there is a slight spice uh or a bait um pepper spice that's starting to creep into um the uh at least the retro hail not so much the smoking experience smoking experience I would say um, it's still got that kind of like creamy mellowness to it, but um, it's just a little something, a little something kind of creeping in. Um, so I'm curious as to what this second third is going to bring. Anyway, let's get to the Villager Cigars Entertainment Report. In terms of what I've been watching lately, I've been busy as hell, and I haven't been able to really watch much of anything. Um, I have been uh, blowing through the old X Men cartoon on Disney Plus because the new X Men cartoon premiered on Wednesday the twentieth. Two episodes are out. I haven't watched them yet because um, I haven't finished the uh, last season of the uh, show from the nineties. And also, I kind of want to let a handful of them kind of bank up. So that when I sit down to watch it, I can marathon like three or four of them and really get a flavor for the show. Um, I think they're only putting out like 10 episodes. So, you know, realistically, I might wait like a couple of weeks and get like four or five of them and, you know, go from there. Um, this weekend, the new Ghostbusters movie, uh, Frozen Empire, premieres. And um for those of you who know me i'm a giant fan of that franchise so i will probably be going to see ghostbusters this weekend maybe twice i don't know um and i say maybe twice because the local drive-in near me is doing a double feature of ghostbusters afterlife which was the one that was released i think two year two or three years ago and um than Frozen Empire. So I'll get to see the old, the the more recent older one and then the new one. And I'm excited for that. And I like the drive-in. Um, I don't know if any of you have drive-ins near you. I just uh, I rediscovered the drive-in last year. And I love the drive-in experience. It's not super expensive when you consider it's 13 bucks a person. Um Unless you're a child, I think 12 or under, in which case children 12, one child 12 and under gets in free for every one paying adult. Anyway, um, but it's fantastic. You can bring your lawn chair and set up outside and, you know, watch on the screen. Or you can sit in your car. The only thing about sitting in your car is, you know, sometimes the angle of the screen and all that and whatever. But um, you can either... You can either run it through your car stereo because they it, it's all based off of a radio frequency now. So you either run it through your car stereo or I have like a little miniature boom boxy kind of stereo thing that I bring with me. And um, I run the audio through that. That way I don't drain my battery because that's the thing. At the end of this thing, you see people from the concession stand having to go out and jump people's cars all over the place. And I don't I don't want to do that. But um it's great. You bring your lawn chair and some blankets if it's cool out. If it's not cool out, then you're just set. You have your cooler full of drinks. You can bring all your own snacks. They have a concession stand. But why spend that money if you can bring all your own snacks? And quite frankly, my snacks are probably going to be better than theirs anyway. Except roller dogs. Roller dogs are a legit thing and should be respected. 
Um, and popcorn. I, I don't like microwave popcorn versus movie theater popcorn. Um, <coughs> but you get some fantastic double features at the drive-in. I saw um, a fan uh, double feature last year. It was Super Mario Brothers and Cocaine Bear. I don't know how you could get better than Super Mario Brothers and Cocaine Bear because they are so polar opposite. So you had all these families there for Super Mario Brothers, and then comes Cocaine Bear. So all these people are having to leave real quick because their kids are watching this bear do copious amounts of drugs and then killing people. It was amazing. Um, but all in all, I'm I, I I'm really looking forward to the drive-in this season. It's the 75th anniversary of the Skyview Drive-In in Belleville, Illinois. And so they're doing all kinds of cool shit. They're even going to be running Looney Tunes cartoons before and during the two movies um, this year. So you're not only getting your double feature, you're also getting cartoons. And they still have the little animation things of the, let's go out to the lobby. Let's go out to the lobby. You know, in order to um, get people to go to the concession stand. I love the kitschiness of it, the old school atmosphere of it and everything. So uh, I'm really looking forward to hitting up and seeing some movies at the drive-in this summer. Um, otherwise, I would say that's kind of all I've been, inter- you know, kind of entertained by here lately. Um, I need to uh, need to take some time. It's, it's, it's just been very busy, very, very busy lately. Um I don't really quite know why, um, but it has been. I did go play bingo the other night, too. I did. I won $12, in fact. Won 12 bucks playing bingo. I got bingo, and unfortunately, eight other people got bingo, or maybe seven other people. I don't know, whatever. It was a $100 pot, and I had to split it with however many people to wear it. I got $12. So um, do the math on that, and you can figure out, you know, kind of, kind of what it was but uh it was a good time um you know i was probably the youngest one there um but uh but it was fun it's uh bingo halls about maybe 10 minutes from my house and uh yep so i'm kind of throwing doing a lot of throwback entertainment here lately i got bingo and i got uh the drive-in and an x-men cartoon from the 90s so you know, for what it's worth, I'm I'm spending a lot of entertainment dollars doing old stuff. So anyway, let's hear about our friends over at My Monthly Cigars. This would normally be the time that I give some information about My Monthly Cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's Offer Code Pulpit. Thanks. While you're over there, make sure you check out the fucking good coffee because uh, you don't want to be a fucker. You want to drink fucking good coffee. Um, And for those of you who enjoy the Daily Press, which is the official pulpit blend that will be leaving us in July... So you will want to um, get your orders in for the Daily Press as soon as possible so that you can uh, have a supply of it before it goes away. Um, And then the other thing, what other announcements regarding the MMC do I have to do? Um, He's doing a coffee, fucking cook coffee giveaway over on X slash Twitter, whatever you want to call it. So make sure you go and follow uh, fucking good coffee, F-A-H King good coffee over there at uh, X and you can get the instructions there. And while you're doing all that, make sure if you're into cigars, which I don't know why you'd be listening to this. If you weren't um, that uh, you go over to mymonthlycigars.com and you check on the box and you sign up for uh, information regarding the fucking good cigar that will be available for pre-order soon. And uh, when it is, You will want to be the first ones to know about it, and you can sign up for the email newsletter to get um, all signed up and get the the information regarding the fucking good cigar. And you can do all that at MyMonthlyCigars.com. Anyway, um, I am slowly but steadily getting into 
the second, third, of this cigar. Sorry, that was offensive. Hopefully I can... 49 minutes. Um, hopefully I can identify that on the thing and edit that down because that was offensive and I'm sorry. Um, but uh, I, uh, I'm i digging this. Um, the draw on it has kind of opened up. Opened up since the first third. The first third I felt like was a little tight. The second third, it's smoking much better, much smoother. You're noticing on the YouTube probably more smoke output than before. Um, it's smoking really, really kind of well. Um, there's been a slight, like, earthy component that has been in introduced into the cigar. Um, I'm still, It's still fairly creamy and uh, whatnot, but at the same time, there's just that little hint of, of something extra, and I would say it's kind of got a little earthiness. A little earthiness to the uh, smoking experience. So um, so it is kind of transitioning from first third to second third, and I'm digging it. Anyway, um, what else do I have to talk about here? I'd like to get to the final third of this cigar while I'm with you guys, just so that, you know, um, you guys have followed me through this review of this cigar this far. So, you know, it wouldn't hurt to, to actually like, you know, let you in on the full process here. Um, they just announced the, uh, stars review that, uh, we did. Oh, that would be another button there. That's the pressure luck board. Anyway, um, they just review or put out the, uh, the um, review that we did for the stars review uh, last month. Um, so cigar eight C. I'm in, I'm in the C group. Um, there are um, four groups, approximately ten of us per group. I don't know if we're all full up right now, but uh, the most recent one, which knowing what it is now. I'm like, fuck, no wonder I liked it. I mean, I and I did. I liked it. Um, I'd have to bring up my review. You know what? I might do that here in a second after I tell you guys. So the most recent review for my group uh, was just announced. Um, so this comes out on Friday. It was announced yesterday on Thursday. And it's the Padron Family Reserve Natural number 96. Um, it uh, uh, was blended originally an exclusive to the Padron family to commemorate special anniversary dates. It's in a 10 count box, um, aged for 10 years, available both in Sun Grown Natural and Maduro wrapper versions. The um, boners of the C group gave it a, um, uh, a final combined score of 88.63. Uh, overall strength was 5.19 out of 10, and it retails with a price point of $30.50 per single. Um, so now, let's just, for shits and giggles, go and find my review of the cigar here. Um, is this it? This is it. Okay. Um, okay, so I gave it a strength of five. So, you know, overall strength score 5.19. I was pretty much dead on there. I gave it a final rating of 86. They gave it a final rating uh, of 88.63. So I was slightly low in terms of, you know, where I came in on the average. Um, I determined that... That cigar had a nutty flavor to the cold draw, nuts and slight pepper to the first third. Nuttiness remained strength intensified on the second third. Um, and the final third, the nuttiness submit, uh, subsided a bit, uh, and a slight bitterness came in at the very end of the cigar. Um, I said uh, that uh, it was a very well-constructed cigar, um, flavor was present, didn't change a whole lot throughout and was very solid. 
So, you know, that was my reaction to a Padron Family Reserve Natural number 96. Some of you might be sitting there thinking, like, what the hell is wrong with you? But that's the really cool part about doing um, these uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, blind reviews like this is, you know, when if, if I were sent a Padron, of course, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, you know, this is going to be really good, you know, because I, I like Padron and they put out really great cigars. But, you know, not knowing that I'm sitting there burning through um, – and I smoked those uh, relatively. I'm trying to remember when I smoked though. Hang on, I can. They they make us notate the dates uh, even on the on the thing. So I smoked the first one. Uh, I smoked them on the same day. I smoked them both on February 25th, and so um, I smoked them. I believe back to back, and it was one of those things where uh, I smoked two. $30 cigars back to back without knowing that I was doing it and um and reviewing it and that's cool. It's a it's a neat program um and uh I I I really dig it. I think it's a lot of fun and um it's it's interesting to get a cigar without a band, not know what it is, and you're just judging it based entirely on the cigar itself. And it it it's a nice way of doing those reviews because who can argue it? I mean, you know, you're, you're taking a group of 10 people, you're compiling the flavor notes and the notes that they have about that cigar. You're averaging their strength scores, you're averaging their ratings. And so you're literally coming up with the most diplomatic kind of way of doing a cigar review. Um, I, I think it's neat. Uh, anyway, we're water tour. I'm probably about halfway through cigar number nine C and I'm enjoying it. The flavor on it. I am getting a little bit more, uh, that earthiness. There's a slight something pick it up in it. And I'm wondering if there's going to be a pepper component by the end of it. Um, Oh, that was me completely shanking a retro hail. Uh, for those of you on the YouTube, mm, son of a bitch, you watch that go down. I exhaled and uh, then had to inhale uh, with a mouthful of smoke in order to do that. And that was that was incorrect. So um, anyway, I tried a retro hail. I, I shanked it. I'll, I'll try it again later. So yeah. Um, in terms of the socials, I'm available on Instagram at The Cigar Pulpit. I'm on Facebook where we have the Pulpit Parishioners group. You guys can get in on the fun there. Uh, I'm on Twitter slash X. I'm on YouTube where you can watch this. And guys, Pulpit Fest 2024 is coming up August 23rd through the 25th, Palm Coast, Florida at the Ashen Ale Lounge. You can go over to Eventbrite, B-R-I-T-E, Eventbrite.com. Just search for Pulpit Fest. It'll come up, and you can go there. You can uh, reserve your tickets now. We need tickets. Uh, everybody needs tickets um, for the purposes of headcount. We need to have a headcount for the event. Um, it's not really going to be you know, one of those things where it's required you know, to attend, although to be honest, I kind of would really prefer that if you're going to attend that you have it. Just like I said, it's it's only fair for Ken. That's that Ken is doing a lot of work. He's putting in a lot of effort and we're going to need chairs and everything else. And so headcount is vital. So you're going to have to make sure you get that ticket. And you know what? There might be a special little bonus something for everybody who shows up that has their ticket and... um you know, not just the, the party crashers that just show up. So, you know, if you're if you're contemplating going, if you're if you're one of those people who's like, you know, I think I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go or or you know, whatever. If you think you're gonna go, bookmark the link. Just bookmark the link. Save it. Find it, save it. Then when you get your plans all finalized and ready, go ahead and hit the order. If you're for sure a lock, 
hit the order and get it over with now. And then at that point, you don't even have to worry about it. But that's the key. You got to get the ticket so that we can have the head count. And that would be greatly appreciated from everybody involved. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And, um, you know, hopefully here soon we can make some more announcements about that. So, um, otherwise, I, uh, I think that's a show. Um, I know that, uh, I've done a lot of solo ones here lately. I appreciate you guys putting up with me with that. This has been a weird month. Like I said, uh, a lot of people have been, uh, busy in their personal lives doing things. And then also, um, PCA moving up to this, uh, month has really, made it tight in terms of being able to get industry guests. And so, you know, I'm doing the best I can. So I appreciate you guys putting up with uh, with the solo shows and everything. But uh, anyway, um, unless I can think of anything else that I have to tell you, I don't think there's anything else I have to tell you guys. This has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Everybody, stay safe and stay smoky. And be watching my Instagram or social media channels, whatever it happens to be. I will go ahead because I did not finish this cigar, this episode, when I complete my review of cigar number 9C for the Stars review team. I will post a screenshot of my review to my socials so that... Uh, you guys can can see the see the inner working, see the process, and you can get uh, get my review of this cigar. And then um, when cigar number nine C is announced and the review is posted to the cigarauthority.com, you'll be able to compare my review to the whole team. So anyway, thanks guys. Have a good weekend. <laughs>